What's up guys, Joe here. Welcome back to my channel and today we're back with stage 3 of the Giro d'Italia and today we head from Biella to Canale and a very exciting stage on paper. In my opinion, we have numerous hills, the Piancelli climb here to kick things off. Multiple hills in the final as well before finishing, like I said, in Canale. And I think this is going to be Bora Hansgrohe versus the rest of the field today because Sagan, this stage is built for Sagan, let's be real. They'll want to control it for him and drop the likes of Caleb Ewan, Dylan Grunewagen whilst not letting anyone clear with an attack and that is going to be a very exciting prospect. So I think I quite like someone present in the breakaway today because I do feel there is a slim chance they could play a major role in the final. So Jens Kukalek can probably try and attack away. Let's see if he's allowed up the roads. But we do have many options for later on in the stage. Guerrero, Simon Carr, Bessio, even Hugh Carthy. Who knows what could happen to try some attacks and force the, the quick riders really out the back. You can see many, many climbs later on. So Hepburn rides on the front for Bike Exchange. I was going to say Mitchell and Scott there, but Bike Exchange on the front. We do have five riders in the end breakaway. Goujard is here. They're now attacking each other. Not ideal, guys, if you want to go to the end, that is for sure. We have Gujard, Crater, Gabero, and Sepulveda right here. A rapid rhythm in the peloton behind, trying to close the gap to that breakaway. I'm pretty sure they won't be successful today, but we'll see how they respond now to the first climbs of the day. Kukula may try and steal some Maglia Ciclamino points here. Gujard leading him out perfectly, to be fair. And Kukula should be one of the quicker riders in this group. Not sure who took it. Let's see. We were second to Crater there. It's not the best, not the worst though. And so the road narrows now onto the Piancelli climb. We need to stay right to the front of this group. And it's Gaviria on the front for UE. Bit of a strange decision for them. I'm going to say Formula is here too. A genuine shout for this stage in my opinion. Um, but very narrow roads positioning is going to be absolutely crucial in the bunch. And Kukulair may as well try and challenge for some of these KOM points. I think we may steal second here from Gujard, are we? Whilst Gubero actually does take first place. Not too bad. I'm not sure Kukulair is going to challenge in that competition. Let's check the pace behind. It's Nicholas Arndt pressing on for DSM. Our guys all very well positioned though. And so I did decide to let Jens Kukala get caught here. I think the break we're pretty much doomed right now. Just two riders left at the front. 50k to go. Let's focus on trying to make this a really reduced group for the finish over the next couple of climbs. So Vandenberg does ride into the foot of this climb. He has now done the great rides from him today. Let's put Kaiseido up to the front. Same with Kukala. He's dropped back for some Odd reason though, again, we could have positioning being very important here. Let's zoom in, try and avoid the trees if we can and stay to the front of this group. And you can see the breakaway. Like I said, they're doomed. And as we're all so well positioned in this group, we'll put Caicedo to the front right now, up to 90 on the Castino climb right here, really pressing over the top. He will steal some points there in the KOM. That's not important for us though at all. We want to try and make this a difficult stage, which we are succeeding in doing for now. So I've seen talks that the sprinters could make this stage. I can see Grunewagen already out the back here and more climbing to come right now to Koenig on the front with Peter Seri. This is a difficult stage. So one and a half K to go in this climb. Caicedo is now done as well. And you know who's come to the front. TJ Van Garderen on the front of this group down to 93 riders, 85 riders right now. Kukalera has gone for us. I don't mind that. He's not on a good day. Diego Ulissi is now struggling too for UE Team Emirates, down to 74 riders. Caleb Ewan, somehow still here, tries to cling on to the group, but TJ really laying down a difficult tempo, and down to 66 riders. Oh, and this is why we are laying down this tempo. Jai Hindley is out the back for Team DSM. What on earth has happened to Hindley? He is gone gone as well. He is not coming back in today. He is so far behind the main group, and TJ still on the front for us, doing a great, great job. So just 20k to go in stage three of the Jira. Road to Italia. TJ trying to grab some water. He's really far back in the group there. Let's try and move up with him immediately if we can and get the water to the guys. Other teams relaying. Kovi is now on the front. A genuine challenger for this stage for me as well in real life. But now we enter the foot of this climb. This is going to be difficult. Let's stay in position. I'm not sure if we'll launch anything. Let's see. So it's not a particularly long climb, but I know there are some bonus seconds at the top here. And we're seeing the likes of Simon Yates attack. Oh boy, I did not quite expect that. Hugh Carthy needs to really ride aggressively right now because Simon Yates is on the front. We have Seri here too. Bernal is trying to get some 
bonus seconds and Simon Yates is going to, or Seri maybe. Then Narvaez took some as well, denying actually Igamba now right there. But 26 riders are at the front here. Let's relay. We have to relay with our guys for Hugh Carthy. I'm sure there'll be some big riders out the back. Let's check. Oh yes, there are. Mark Soler, Emmanuel Bookman, Danny Martinez. I know Pavel Sivkov is behind as well. For the Ineos Grenadiers, let's relay right here. We need to pull for Hugh Carthy really aggressively with our guys to try and keep these guys behind. Of course, you sat to the front. Could we even try and challenge for the stage win with one of these guys? Apparently, the groups do come back together. That is a nightmare for us. So maybe we look at the stage win right here. So with six kids go, Carr and Ruben Guerrero are going to relay on the front for us for as long as they can. Then we have our Berto Betio, who is our challenger for the stage today. He is going to try and sprint for this one. We'll sit on the wheel of maybe Simon Yates if we can with Hugh Carthy. But Guerrero and Carr are doing a great job making this a really difficult finish. Carthy is here on the wheel of Simon Yates. How are we going to play this? I don't know, but let's try and win it with Alberto Betiol. Let's go up to 90, maybe 95 with Carthy. Put Betiol in a great position to challenge in a sprint. Let's go. Here goes Betiol trying to take it. Simon Yates as well. It's going to be a close finish. Really close finish here today. Oh, my word. It is so close. So close. But Alberto Betiol takes stage three of the Giro d'Italia. Just ahead of Simon Yates, so oh, I thought we'd missed out, but what a win. Great team performance here today. What a finish to that stage that was. I love that, guys. That was brilliant. Simon Yates did his best. That acceleration is tough to overcome. Betiel just about did it here today with his slightly better sprint stat. He's probably the best sprinter here. I'm not sure who else was here. Maybe Almeida could have challenged. Peter Sagan was there. What was Sagan doing in 13th? No idea what he was doing for Lena as well. Could have challenged maybe Narvaez as well. There were other good sprinters here, but we placed Bessio well and he delivered. So quickly looking at the riders that did drop today. Clement Champisan out the back. Danny Martinez out the back. Balkan Molima over a minute down for Trek Segafredo. Not good for them. I think Nibali was at the front. Yes, he was. So maybe Nibali is their GC leader at this race. Chicone dropped as well. So we have four some good, good riders out the back here today. Although I think most of the GC contenders, bar of course Jai Hindley, have remained unscathed. You can see here, Jai Hindley was 131st, losing five and a half minutes. What on earth happens? Anyway, even better news because Alberto Betiol, with the bonus seconds today, moves into the Maglia Rosa after his great prologue on stage one, a great time trial, really great stuff. We're back in pink. EF back in pink, things you love to see. Ewan continues in the Chiclamino jersey. Gabero takes the Maglia at Zura as well. The stages only get better though. Stage four, Tusa Stola should be a brilliant one. We have plenty of climbing. Look at this. This is gonna be a great stage and I hope to see you for it. And if you enjoyed today, make sure you smash that like button, drop a sub on the channel as well if you're new and I'll see you guys in the next one.